In May 1951, one year into the Korean War, PFC Francis P. Wall and his regiment found themselves stationed near Korwon, about 60 miles north of Seoul. As they were preparing to bombard a nearby village with artillery, all of a sudden, the soldiers saw a strange sight up in the hills like a jack-o'-lantern come down across the mountain. What happened after? The pulsing, attacking light, the lingering debilitating symptoms would mystify many for decades to come. As the GIs watched, the craft made its way down to the village, where the artillery air bursts were starting to explode. We further noticed that this object would get right into the center of an airburst of artillery and yet remain unharmed. Wall later told John P. Timmerman of the Center for UFO Studies in a 1987 interview. Suddenly, the object turned, Wall said, and whereas at first, it had glowed orange, now it was a pulsating blue-green brilliant light. He asked his company commander for permission to fire at the object, with armor-piercing bullets from an M1 rifle. As the bullets hit the body of the craft, he recalled, they made a metallic ding. The object started behaving still more erratically, shunting from side to side as its lights flashed on and off. Wall's recollections of what happened next are stranger still. We were attacked, he said, swept by some form of array that was emitted in pulses, in waves that you could visually see only when it was aiming directly at you. That is to say, as a searchlight sweeps around and the segments of light, you would see it coming at you. He remembered a burning, tingling sensation sweeping over his body, as if he were being penetrated. The men rushed into underground bunkers and peeped through the windows, watching as the craft hovered above them and then shot off at a 45 degree angle. It's that quick, he said. It was there, and was gone. Three days after the incident, the entire company of men was evacuated by ambulance, with special roads cut to haul out those too weak to walk. When they finally received medical treatment, they were found to have dysentery and an extremely high white blood cell count. To me, says Richard F. Haynes, a UFO researcher and former NASA scientist, they had symptoms that sounded like the effects of radiation. In the wake of the Korean War, which ended in July 1953, dozens of men have reported seeing similar unidentified flying objects over the course of the 37-month conflict. The craft often resembled flying saucers. According to unofficial reports, as many as 42 were corroborated by additional witness reports, an average of more than one a month in just over three years. At first, according to Korean War historian Paul M. Edwards, Many researchers believe that the sightings were Soviet experiments, based on German technology and foreign research in anti-gravity. These were supposedly so large they could carry 50 tons of weight, and were powered by electromagnetic propulsion. He writes in unusual footnotes to the Korean War. What was being sighted, it was suggested, were disks the Russians were testing over the Korean skies. But in the years since the fall of the Soviet Union, a number of Soviet reports of sighting UFOs over Korea have trickled in, discrediting these theories. Why were there so many UFO sightings throughout the Korean War? Were they the product of thousands of exhausted men under incredible stress, or a sign of something more mysterious? From 1952 until 1969, the United States Air Force ran Project Blue Book, a systemic study into unidentified flying objects and their potential threat to national security. When it was shuttered in December 1969, the Air Force announced they had found nothing of note and terminated all activity. In the early years of the Cold War, it was often speculated that these crafts might be Soviet or Chinese vessels, with technology unknown to American troops. Haynes believes this theory has been disproved. If they were, he says, they would have been building those crafts for use in later wars like the Vietnam War, for instance. The Soviet UFO sightings, Edwards describes, makes it similarly unlikely, as do the impossibly high-tech specifications of some of the sightings. In Wall's case, for instance, he described a kind of force field taking effect a while after he began shooting, where his bullets simply ricocheted away from the craft. Haynes, for his part, believes the rash of sightings across the Korean War might suggest that something in the universe is especially interested in how human beings behave in the throng of military action. We tend to be very creative to fight a war, Haynes says, listing off the various sciences and technologies that might come into play into military action. If you were interested in how another country or another race of people fought their wars, you'd want to collect information on that, wouldn't you? He trails off. That's one possible explanation. There may be others. In the years following the war, Wall lost contact with many of his men in his regiment. After the experience, he remembered his company agreeing that they would not file a report because they'd lock every one of us up and think we were crazy, he told Timmerman. What made him choose to make a testimony, however, was the lasting after-effects of his illness, including permanent weight loss from 180 pounds to 138, stomach problems, and periods of disorientation and memory loss after returning to the United States. Wall's recollections of the UFO sightings were consistent and acute, but whether what he remembered actually happened is harder to prove. 
fighting conditions were almost intolerably stressful, and it's entirely possible that he may have experienced some kind of hallucination, brought on by the terror of the situation, where he feared for his life. There might also have been a moment of feverish delirium. Even the raised white blood cell count that surprised army doctors, said Haynes, is consistent with many of the bacterial infections which might also cause severe dysentery, as are hallucinations. In a later interview with Haynes, Wall described how he had discussed what he saw with some 25 other men, but none ever came forward or could later be traced. War is all kinds of hell, and this could have easily been some kind of hallucination, or some other god-awful condition caused by the stress of battle. However, dismissing this case as fiction due solely to that fact would be foolish. This is a rather detailed hallucination, wouldn't you agree? It makes me wonder. Don't forget to sign up for our Patreon page. Members get early access to videos, ad-free, and you can see content you can't see anywhere else.